Alrighty, welcome back everyone, I'm Blaze here. Today's video is the Ranger Class Guide and Review for the Planes of Power Expansion, where I played on the Mangler Timelock Progression Server in the year 2020. Let's get to it. Before I really begin though, I put out class review guides for a Ranger, Bard, and Necromancer. This is just the latest in the series. I try to put one of these videos out for every expansion that I go through on the Mangler server. So the contents of this video, we're going to talk about the new spells in POP, alternate advancements, gear, and some considerations for the expansion after POP being Eldon or Lost Dungeons of Norath. So the new spells. The stuff that's in yellow, the text that's in yellow, I consider that to be very big, some big changes in this expansion. So the first one, let's talk about the lull. There's a new lull finally available. I think the last lull was from Classic Era and only worked up to level 40. Not good. Not good at all. So finally in Planes of Power, Rangers have the ability to lull up to level 65. It's about time, so that lets them split mobs in outdoor zones much more effectively. Rangers also get two new replacements for their attack bonus buffs they call the predator and then the tune airline and they're both group wide so you only have to cast it once it'll get everybody in your group and those are specialty buffs that only rangers can do themselves the next one is a tremendous new spell it's a new root that does zero damage it will not break mezes unlike every single other root that rangers have always had they would always do damage on landing. This won't. Next are half second cast cold and fire nukes that can augment your archery damage, which in this current point in time is the primary means that rangers do damage. They do archery, they do not melee, which makes the two melee weapon procs buffs mostly pointless. Next is a new replacement for Spirit of the Wolf or run speed buff called Spirit of the Eagle, I believe, and it incorporates Sow and Levitate into one, and it lasts for an hour instead of 36 minutes with Spirit of the Wolf. Then there's some replacements for your Druid HP buff line and then your Self stat buff where it boosts your attack and HP and damage shield. There's a new buff that's Self only that boosts your mana regeneration, and it does a kind of a weird visual effect. It magnifies or something but it lasts for three hours. Next is a replacement for your Chloropast line and it boosts your HP regen that you can get off of it. If you cast this Chloropast on a Necromancer or a Shaman, they will love you. Next are some Fire and Cold Resist buffs, some Poison and Disease cures, better versions of it, and then a new Magic Based Dot. Next, let's talk about alternate advancements. So combat stability, combat agility, and double repost, increasing your survivability. And then combat fury. This is a big, big AA. I think this is the biggest AA to get maxed out in this expansion. I was wondering why my DPS output on my alt ranger, Redornian, why his DPS output was so much lower than the main rangers in the guild. Even though I was using the same exact bow, I was using the same exact best in slot bow as those main rangers. And the reason why is Combat Fury. Combat Fury, when you put more AA points into it, it increases your critical hit chance. And it has a huge, huge jump from the Lucan expansion to Planes of Power. With three AA points, you can go from a 75% chance to critical up to a 175% chance to critical. And when you max it out, it goes up to 225% chance. And this is big. This basically increases your chance to critical hit with any attack round. This is how you get up to peak DPS with archery. Max out combat fury first. The next AA is called Entrap, and it is a 7 to 8 second cooldown snare, which takes 1.75 seconds to cast, and it takes zero mana. Very quick cooldown and very quick cast. This is an amazing amazing snare that essentially replaces the Tolan's Darkwood Gauntlets that I've been using since the Kunark era 
and it casts way faster. It's 1.75 seconds as opposed to a four second cast. And this is, they're both mana free. They're both mana free versions. Next is Guardian of the Forest. So this is sort of a new discipline, I guess you'd say, a new damage based discipline. The main discipline that Ranger's been using, True Shot, to augment their archery damage. And it has a hour long cooldown. Guardian of the Forest has a 15 minute cooldown, so you can use this four times for every True Shot. And it boosts your haste over the 200% cap up to 225. It boosts your attack bonus, your attack buff, and it also has a portion of HP regen on it. It's a nice means to further augment your damage output. Next is Headshot. This AA is legendary, but it is nowhere near as powerful as what it once was. It's really nothing to write home about in Planes of Power. It only works on mobs that are level 59 or lower, and pretty much all the grouping content that you're going to do in Planes of Power, the mobs are all in their 60s. Like in Plane of Fire, the best grouping zone in Planes of Power, all the mobs are either level 65 or 68. Headshot will not work on anything. But what Headshot is, it's a proc that you can get using archery of where you have a chance to do somewhere in the range of 20,000 damage at this point in time, a 20,000 damage smack with archery. It used to be unlimited. It used to be an unlimited proc rate. So actually having a lower delay bow was big and getting more procs of headshot. But now with a recent nerf, they capped the rate at which it can proc to maybe be only twice every minute. I mean, it can do more or less, but it's proc rate has been severely diminished so it's nowhere near as good as it once was headshots really nothing to write home about in this expansion some other aas include boost to how much your healing spells work and the chance that you have to critical on them to have a critical heal planar power which is a stat cap boost so say at level 60 your stats can only go up to 255 and as you get higher over 60, you get an innate boost to your stats. It goes up to 280 at, at 65, and you can push it up even higher to around 305, 310 with the maximum rank at planar power. And the next finally is burst of power, which is a bonus increase to your ability to double attack on melee rounds. But it's kind of pointless in this expansion because rangers are still archery predominant for their DPS. Next, let's talk about gear. This will not be as in-depth as on my bard because this is just an alt. I don't do as much research on my alts, but I believe the best bow at this point in time in Planes of Power is called Bow of the Tempest. And it drops in Plane of Time off of Valenzek. It is a 43 damage, 36 delay bow with some insane stats on it, some very insane stats on it. But for most rangers, the bow that they're going to use is this. Featherwood Compound Bow. This is considered to be the second best in slot bow in this expansion. And the benefit of it is that it is a trade skill item that can be crafted and it is tradable. You can buy this in the bazaar. I bought this for two chrono. So come Planes of Power, there are a bunch of different trade skill recipes for a bunch of different elemental bows. This is the air bow with the lowest damage delay. The next best one is the fire bow. It's called, I believe it's called the obsidian wood compound bow. But this bow is a 24 damage, 24 delay, and it has a chance to do a 75 damage proc that does a little stun on it. And I believe this is the second best in slot that you can have, and it's buyable. You can buy it straight from the Czar, which is very, very nice. So this is definitely an item that I would get. I would splurge on in this expansion if you have a Ranger. Next, in terms of general gear, 
There are a bunch of elemental chain molds which drop off high level raid content and planes of power which pretty much gives you your best in slot, chest, legs, boots, gauntlets, all that. So I'd be aiming for that. And there's sort of a lower tier called ornate armor, ornate chain armor, which still sometimes is worth getting for the clicky effects. For example, the plane striders greaves. So I mentioned how one of the new spells in this expansion for rangers is a root that does no damage. The only one that does for rangers. These are pants which do that root and do it mana free with a three second cast. So with Entrap the AA line, you can snare for free. And with these legs, you can root for free. And it's only a three second cast. It's really nothing. That's really nothing. So these are definitely something that you might want to hit up. This is the ornate chain. So this is not the elemental gear that's the best. This is the ornate chain, which is like the best. Um, the way I can put it is ornate gear is a bizarre item that you can buy similar to the bow. You can buy all the ornate molds and make it yourself, unlike the elemental gear, which is no drop. Or at least the molds are no drop. Or the ornate molds are droppable, so you can buy them in the bazaar. And lastly, in this expansion, the attack bonus that is available on gear, like, let me find an item. Yeah, I see, like, these gloves have a 15% attack on it. Um, that boosts your ATK buff, your, your ATK cap. I believe the absolute cap from gear is 250. So for most expansions prior, rangers have constantly been trying to use an avatar weapon, such as an avatar bow or primary, to get that 100 attack bonus off that avatar proc. And those avatar weapons being from the Velius expansion, you're getting from going to Sleeper's Tomb. In Lucan, I believe you can get enough gear to make the avatar proc irrelevant, but definitely in Planes of Power, you will easily get enough gear if you raid to make the avatar proc irrelevant. You will no longer need to proc avatar because the, uh, the 100 attack from avatar will not stack on top of the 250 cap that you would get from gear. So that's really nice. You no longer need to proc avatar if you have enough attack from your gear. And then lastly is Eldon, some miscellaneous things for the next expansion. This is for Mangler, but I'm not sure if this will carry over to other time lock progression servers. Eldon has been shortened to two months on Mangler as opposed to what it was originally, three. So it'll be quicker. And partly the reason why is because people still only raid Planes of Power content in Eldon. It really doesn't change anything in terms of the raiding scene. So people often just want it to go quicker. But in Eldon, there are augments that are really incorporated into the game that you can slot into your gear, like you can see slot 1 type 7. There are augments that you can slot into your gear, so there's new weapon proc augments, there's new stat augments that you can put into your gear, so if you want a further boost to attack, you can put that from augments, or say if you want to boost your stamina, or say boost your resists, you can get that on an augment. And there's also some new spells available in Eldon. Looks like there's a new wolf form. There's a new magic based dot called Fire Swarm. And there's a new so called Pack Shrew. Now, I don't know if this spell is still in the game. The Shrew line of spells came from a time in EverQuest where Spirit of the Wolf and, say, Bard Silos did not work indoors. So the only way to cast. Or it's not that they, they didn't work indoors, it's that you couldn't cast them indoors. So the only movement speed buffs that you could cast indoors and actually work were like the shrew line that shamans mostly had a monopoly on. But if the uh, shrew line is in this expansion, then this will be the only means that rangers will have to cast one buff that affects the entire group that gives everybody so. So if you cast pack shrew as a ranger, it would give everybody in your group so there's another way to do it by using mass group buff the the aa line that has an hour cooldown but it's kind of wasteful just for spear of the wolf so pack shrew would allow rangers to do a group wide run speed buff if that does still exist in eldon so 
thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. Of course, the gear list wasn't the most exhaustive. There's definitely better weapons and better individual pieces of armor in this expansion. I think there's like a clicky that has a dispel on it. There's a three second class from playing a time that rangers can use. There's a bunch of other stuff. So by no means that's the not the only items, but those are sort of the big items that you might want to look out for if you were playing a ranger much more casually. So thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.